Uh, Michael, you do cut your guide. I guess really it's the second derivative of growth that we uh, are seeing flatten out, right? That's right. That's accurate. Uh, what happens to your forecast? Where'd you take your numbers? Well, we took our numbers down. Um, you know, our, our outlook for the coming quarter is, is in line with the high end of the company's guidance. I think Julia did a good job of, of laying out some of those drivers there and some of the feedback we got from the company. I think there's a bigger issue right now, and, and really it's this kind of intersection of, of concern uh, toward growth stocks overall uh, and expectations that are embedded in the stocks. And so if you look at the changes we made in our model beyond the second quarter, we really did take a more conservative view of, of long-term growth. I think that investors are already there. I think that the analyst community has been a little slower to understand that some of these challenges are going to be sustained. Uh, and I have some concern about stories that are considered reacceleration stories as we go through the year. Uh, there is a lot of uncertainty. I felt like Snap was very transparent about it. I think the stock is still a good value here. I think it's a good long idea, but I think we're in a transition period where people uh, need to start to digest that reacceleration may be challenging. Well, give me some examples of where you think reacceleration is still baked in. Oh, I think look, look at stocks um, uh, across the board. Um, I'll give you an example of something that came out and uh, just this week would be Netflix and talking about uh, user growth uh, or member growth reaccelerating as you get out in the future. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think we need to take a really hard look at the information we have in front of us right now, what the challenges are in the industry, and maybe take a bit more of a, a, a you know, I don't want to say cautious, but just realistic view of, of the potential for reacceleration. So there's member growth for Netflix, there's advertiser growth, there's things like that. I just think that over the course of the last year, we were very excited about the sky being the limit, and now we're seeing a number of these headwinds uh, that still, you know, we have opportunity for, for some growth for businesses. I just don't know why mm. things inflect upward from here. Michael, that's interesting. I mean, many people have been focused on that slowdown in those Netflix numbers, but you're actually looking for reacceleration this year. Is that right? So is this an opportunity for Netflix? So, so for Netflix, when you look at the way they talked about their business and they gave you guidance for the second quarter of 2 million uh, decline in members, the outlook for beyond that was to return to growth. So that is a reacceleration. Um, I think that so they will return to growth in the back half of the year. But when I look beyond 2022, do I think that the pace of growth, what they see in the back half of this year, will accelerate further beyond that? I, you know, I'm, I'm harder pressed to give you reasons why that will reaccelerate. So are people too negative on streaming right now? Uh, I mean, we've seen a number of the stocks in the space just get beaten down. But if you're talking about a reacceleration later this year and into the future, what does that mean for content spend for the business models, which a lot of folks have just decided it's not a good one recently? Yeah, well, I think that the pendulum tends to swing too far. Um, anytime we, we, we get a, a more uh, substantial update on information, okay? In the case of Netflix, I think there were uh, two data points in particular that do uh, impair the long-term view of streaming. One is where the company runs into resistance with respect to its member growth. I think that at 220 million global members, that is lower than what the bull case had been historically. And second is the expansion of profitability and what those profit margins look like, where again, I think that the investment community believed we could get well beyond the 20% that they're at right now. Both of those things, I think, impair the view of streaming as a category overall. I do think, however, being negative on every streaming company in every case is very extreme and not accurate. There are differences whether you're streaming music or video, ad supported or not, sports or not. There are a lot of differences that matter. Um, and so I do think that the pendulum has swung too far uh, to the negative on streaming as a category.